Because some are believers in closed cell phones and some are believers in open. Right. Yes. What's the difference between closed cell and open cell? The uh, open cell is like a sponge. The closed cell is like plate glass. So would a, clay, a closed cell might act as a vapor barrier? No, it you, does. Uh, a barrier is a pretty strong word, but a vapor retarder. Retarder. Yeah. And perm, perm is the, the rating that insulation people use, perm ratings, right? So, mm -hmm. so anything that's under a one is considered like plastic, like, like vinyl wallpaper, so that doesn't breathe. Now, what happens when, when, when they have these, when they use the wrong insulation, then you're, you, you do a lot of cases where, where what happens when the wall can't breathe, then what happens? What you come in on, on, that, on those types of homes with those problems? Interstitial moisture buildup. Really? So if you if you if you if your insulation doesn't breathe, then it what happens? It 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 traps the moisture. That's exactly right. We could expect a mold issue down the road because we're not drying it. We're not, as you call it, breathing. Stops it. Vinyl wallpaper stops it. Um, water uh, retarder paint stops it from uh, drying because mm -hmm. it will get wet because as you know moisture is just like water running downhill. If there's less here than here it's going to equalize as quickly as it can. Mm -hmm. And if it can't then it'll eventually condense. And if it condenses now we have uh, a breeding ground for mold. And then that's where you have to come in and, and what do you do if you run into something like that? If somebody had insulation and now there's mold because the wall doesn't breathe Generally, the one does that happen. Right. We have to go in and remove the drywall and the insulation and treat the substrate and clean it up because interstitial mold, or if there's been a home that there's been a lot of rain uh, while they were constructing the house and the high levels of humidity in the home, they'll, they'll have us come in. What about, I heard this uh, term when they build a home and they bring the lumber and they call it construction mold. What do you, what, what is construction mold? That well, a I friend of mine homes? termed it lumberyard mold. Lumberyard mold. Okay. 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 And and where what is that? What is the wood? The the ability of the wood to absorb moisture. The newer wood, as you know, the higher buffer capacity of that wood is very low, and once it gets saturated. Mold is in the air and it'll go to the wood and grow. Would that have something to do, you know, like in the old days, I, I know they used to cut trees down and they were 100 year old trees, right? right. And we built houses with oak and these older homes. Right. And I, I don't know, maybe we cut all the 100 year old trees down. So now we cut down uh, younger trees. Well, you're using fast grow lumber now. You're, you're, you're genetically modified lumber. And it grows in way f faster time than the old trees grew. It's softer wood. So it's just, it's more like more susceptible for that mold at the lumber yard you're talking about. Right. Exactly. Now do you worry about that? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Because once it's in there, and then say they don't use a dehumidifier in the basement. And in Cleveland summers it gets real humid. And that mold will reactivate. And, and start it'll growing. grow again. And if you have an allergic child, specifically children are pretty susceptible and suddenly you have a basement full of, of bad air and you wonder why your child has asthma so so if you have lumber that gets delivered and you happen to see them put it up you probably want to clean it then remove it would you say well that's what we do we go in and and we spray stabilized peroxide on the wood which permeates the, the, the wood and it denatures the spore so that that spore could never grow back again and then we put a shield on it of organocyline and that organocyline is a nanotechnology that will prevent any further growth and and uh, and so what so that's probably not an expensive process is not, it? no not really the other thing that can cause it is if the home is being built in the winter and then they put the wood in and they pour the footers and they don't dehumidify.
by the basement, that humidity is so high that the wood will become affected then. And, and, I, and I've also heard when they build these larger homes, it takes longer right. to build. And, and I heard that, you know, they, the wa exterior drainage isn't done and the gutters right. aren't done. And they're, they're working, you know, inside. Right. And all that humidity and moisture is in the basement. And then that amplifies that, that construction mode you're talking about. Absolutely. And then if it's in the winter and somebody decides they're going to put plastic up uh, because the heat isn't really in yet and they want to do other things before they put the furnace in, they'll put a they'll put plastic around and, and shield it, and then they'll put a salamander in there. Oh, uh, immediately like a uh, one of those gas <laughs> right. propane heaters. Right. And, uh, and, and a salamander. That's and the byproduct of that is is water vapor. Right. Right. Water vapor and right. of course carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. Right. So. So so what they do is they want to heat the house and dry it during construction to minimize the mold and actually they're, they're creating. creating the mold by using those propane heaters. Yeah. So now let's say we do all that and then they put in that, you said, closed, spo uh, clo closed cell insulation. That's not a good thing, right? Well, it depends. Where you I mean, put there, it. There are places for closed cell and places for uh, open cell. And there's an argument, uh, for example, if we include the attic in the conditioned space, so rather than it, uh, insulating the ceiling, you insulate the inner side of the roof, or you could put, you know, rid it on top of the roof. You know, while you're talking about that, I've been seeing, uh, you know, I do inspections on new homes and, and old homes, and lately I've been seeing a lot of the Energy Star homes, they, they're actually putting the foam insulation in the attic instead of putting in the floors and on the knee walls, um, they're blowing it into the, the rafter spaces. Mm -hmm. And and they're, I guess, are, are they trying to condition that space? Or what do you think of that? That whole? is now a conditioned space. And you don't think anything could happen with condensation? Or? Well, there's the argument. If we use a closed cell and we develop a roof leak, we have no idea. Where it's coming from. It's, right. Yeah, and if we use open cell, then uh, if you have a leak, it'll happen right now. So it depends on the climate. And there's a uh, heating climate, which we live in in Ohio or Michigan. Right. Moisture control is the name of the game. In other words, and then there's the heating and cooling, which would be Memphis and so on. And then there's the cooling climate, which would be Miami and Brownsville. And, and so when you on. went to the to Ohio, you were probably moisture control would mean like we're in a cold climate zone and yes, moisture control heating, climate, yeah. heating and, and we're more worried about the moisture in our house leaving, like high humidity, then the moisture coming in. That's what you, is that what you mean? That's exactly what I mean. Okay. Now, when you were talking about the attics, now I know you deal with a lot of attics. Uh, you deal with the mold in the attics, right? Yes. And and, and what it what you, do you have that problem with that insulation or without that insulation? What I mean, when do you deal with the mold in the attics? We don't see mold in the attics when they've been foamed. On the sheeting, because it's you can't see it. You can't see it at all. Um, generally, we don't. First, we don't consider attic mold a, a health issue. We consider it a structural issue caused by insufficient ventilation, thermal bridging, attic, you know, uh, bathroom fans improperly installed. Like I remember, you were saying a lot of a lot of times uh, people have humidifiers, right? <laughs> They're like. Yeah, the humidifiers they leave them on, and 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 uh, the humidity rises up into the attic through like hand lights and through right. attic accesses, and then if there's snow on the roof, right, that's right. where you get condensation, and that's and what, and that's then the mold grows, right? What, and you usually yep. get what kind of mold? You tell me it's always the same mold usually. What it's, it's all the mold that's in the air, Clostridium, Penicillium, Cladosporium. It's the common everyday occurring molds, just magnified from the mold machine called the Herd Furnace Humidifier. 